Awesomeness Junkies, welcome back to Hustle is for Life Motivation. This is the channel where you come to upgrade your software, the software in your brain. So you can learn new things. You can really truly see what's possible for you. You can break your paradigm, the story you keep telling yourself, where you're stuck, where you're frustrated, where things are not going your way and you don't know what to do. So the whole focus for me is that I bring on amazing guests where we can learn from them, from their stories, their journeys, and the amazing work that they're doing to change people's lives. And tonight I have somebody who's truly amazing. She is a dating expert. She's a relationship coach and a dating expert. She is the co-creator of Jumpstart Your Heart Process, creator of Surefire Dating Formula, and the creator of Yes to Love seven weeks to attract the love of your life and she just uses the culmination of her nine years of experience in the dating and relationship industry to teach single people how to open their hearts to love and attract the partner that they truly want she's got an extensive background uh, and research that she relies on she helps single people gain clarity on what they need uh, to actually attract the right partner to get aligned with their the clear vision of who they want and what they want their life to look like and she can only be described as somebody who is the female hitch of the dating world and <laughs> i <laughs> so please help me welcome krista beck the date doctor Oh, okay. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Talal. Thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure to have you on. Um, I was just intrigued by when uh, when the intro was made by our mutual friend. And uh, I, was, I was really excited to actually have you on because I think this is a great topic to discuss. I've actually haven't really had anybody on to go really deep in relationships and dating and all that kind of thing. So I was really excited to have you on and thank you for taking the time to be here. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to see what kind of where we go in this conversation. <laughs> awesome. I think uh, we're going to have a fantastic conversation. So, yeah, we are. Yes, we are. So let's start off, Krista, by telling us a little bit about how you got started. What's your journey been like so far where you're now you know, running multiple programs, you are coaching clients, and you've been working in the in, in the industry to help people, uh, you know, gain clarity on their love life, help them with the relationships and dating side of things for, well, over over nine years now. Mm -hmm, nine years, yeah, nine years, I can't believe it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. nearly a decade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost 10, I'll have a big party next year. <laughs> yeah, 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 you, you better send me an invite as well. Okay, I'll invite you. You can come, you'll come to my party. You'll fly awesome. over, okay? Awesome. Got it. Got it. I'm there. I'm there. Sold. <laughs> All right. So you want to know like how I became me and how I evolved into being who I am? Yeah. Well, yeah. it it really, I mean, it really ha did start when I was really young. I've always been passionate about relationships. I've always been passionate about love and very fascinated with the dynamics with people within relationship. Um, and so in 2009, I read um, Tim Ferriss's book. Have you ever read that, 4-Hour Workweek? Um, Have you ever I, read haven't, I haven't read that, but I've heard a lot about it, and it's on my reading list, so I will get there eventually. I know I will get there eventually. So I read Tim Ferriss's book, and right. I was so inspired by what he said, and one of the main things he says is, you know, start a business online, and these are the two things I heard. Start a business online, and travel to Thailand. So those are the two things, so that's what I did. I bought a ticket, went to Thailand, I committed to living there, um, I lived there for eight months, right. and and I had no plan, I'm just, it was just go to Thailand and try to do something online. So that's what I did, and so what I did is while I was there, um, I started a website, and I did a lot of research on what was going on on the internet, what would really work, what wouldn't work, and so I decided on uh, starting a website called Love Your Boyfriend. I did keyword research, and I wrote all these articles about how to love your boyfriend, how to enhance your romance, how to really um, just have the love that you want, and I grew it within, like, within a year and a half, almost two years, to like 100,000 visitors a month were coming wow. to my website to gain wow. my... Um, advice so it was really exciting and really great but then um, I did break up with that boyfriend that I that inspired me that I wrote all the articles about and that really inspired me and I went through a really hard time after that breakup and so um, fast forward a couple years I created a training 
called um, Jumpstart Your Heart, and I co-created it with a really amazing woman who had like 25 years of experience in transformational um, training. Right. Um, and so we collaborated on creating this five-week process to really help people to move beyond their own blocks to love because a lot of people really get stuck after they have a breakup they shut down, they mm. go away, they make up stories, and then they try to like find love again, but there's all this baggage still in their space. So we created this process to help clear that. Um, and so then after that, when I was working with people, they started to feel freed up, they started to feel happy again, they started to feel inspired naturally to date again. They're like, well, what's next? Mm. Like felt freed up. They're like, okay, well, so what's next? And so from there, I created this thing called the Great Love Experiment which uh, people participated from all over the world, and it was really fun, and it was, uh, I wanted to create a process to make dating not so messy, right. and to help people to get crystal clear on the kind of partner that they really want. Hmm. Not just the attractive, smart, funny, educated, like what everybody wants, you know? Like what do they really need and want in their heart? And I took the, uh, uh, designed this transformational, introspective journey that most Single people do not go on on their own. So I created this journey for them to really get what it is they really need and want and then to sort and choose and date from that place. And it was such a powerful, um, such a powerful process. Um, so I could go on and on, but like, and then from there, um, from there, it just really started to expand. I created more and more programs like Surefire Dating Formula um, that is for single women. I have just created um, Yes to Love, Seven Weeks to Finding the Love of Your Life, and that's for everyone, regardless of whatever sex, gender, sexual orientation. It's really the uh, seven core disciplines that you can really enhance in yourself to attract and really have the love that you truly want. So... So that's like a little, little bit in a nutshell in terms of my career. And what's really next on the horizon for me is global, a global experience of love. And I'm doing my best to create a movement called Presence of Love and creating a documentary along with that, which is to create a day where everyone focuses on the presence of love, whatever that is for them. And in the documentary, we're really going to be exploring what is the presence of love for everyone and how can we increase our love intelligence? How Are there ways that we can actually choose in the moment to be a, a loving human being? So that's what I see, like, it's always, can you see, it's always been love, and now it's getting, now I'm setting my sights for more like global global level love, like being a part of helping to facilitate that just because I feel like there's so much, you know, so many problems in the world and mm. why don't I create something that could be a gift to have people focus on what I think is the most th the most important thing that can actually change any problem if we bring love to it. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And that's a really powerful belief. The great thing that I'm hearing, Christoph, from what you've said is the fact that you, first of all, are really passionate about it. You've always been passionate about relationships and love. And then you go ahead and you read a book. It inspires you to go ahead and take action. You didn't hesitate. You just go fly off to Thailand and start researching and start to set up a business. Awesome. Love it. That's what I am like. I like to jump off planes and build a parachute on the way down. Totally cool with that. Okay. So I love that. Totally can relate to that. And then the great thing is that you went through a bit, bit, of a bit of a dark time where you broke up with your boyfriend at the time, uh, you, the, the person who actually inspired you, and, but you didn't stop. You didn't, it, it, didn't, it didn't get to you. You just carried on. You just said, okay, so well, how can I use this to help it, other people? It, it, yeah. And it did get to me. It was mm. one of the darkest times of my life, but yeah. I pivoted. I mm. used it as a way to use my healing to shift for and to be a contribution to people who are also having the same pain that I was. Yeah, yeah, and, and that that's so amazing to hear. That's really amazing. So let's dig a little bit deeper there. Then, what allowed you to pivot? What kind of mindset? What kind of beliefs allowed you to make that shift? Because for most people, it is a really hard time when you go through a breakup, and yeah. usually, like we talked about before, they get stuck, and they feel frustrated. They feel down. They feel like. That's it. There's there's no hope anymore. But what allowed you to make that pivot? 
Well, it really took people reflecting back to me what was really going on with me. I remember one conversation I was having with a, one of my girlfriends at the time, and I was still angry. You know, like after you have a breakup, have you been through a breakup before? Never. Oh, well, you're lucky. Well, after a breakup, <laughs> <laughs> you are a very lucky man. Um, after a breakup, <clears throat> it's really painful. Right. It's, it can be really devastating. It's kind of like depending on how much you've been connected, it can almost be like a... Um, like a car accident, you know, you either have a little fender bender or you're in traction at the hospital and all your bones are broken. It depends on this, the scale like of how it can really affect your heart and hurt. So I remember this one conversation I was having with a girlfriend. I was mad. I was angry at him. I was just blaming and angry and everything. And I was still, I considered myself a pretty conscious person back then, but she was someone I felt like I can be myself with, so that's really important. Right. But she's Krista, this is not you. You being mm. angry like this, this is not you. And I was like, whoa, mm. right, this is not me. So once she reflected back to me, then I was like, okay, this needs to shift. Like I need to, I'm love, like I'm a loving person. Me being angry and resentful is just not who I am. So I need to shift that. Right. And so I work. I figured out like what it was, letting go. And the, the main thing that I can give for your audience who are watching right now is if if it's love, it doesn't hurt. So if you're hurting, it means you're not coming from a space of love. Mm. So that's the first key. If you're hurting and in pain, then there's definitely something that you need to shift because no one can change or shift something for you. You need to be the one to like take ownership of it and deal with whatever you need to deal with around that. And so that's what I did. I went on my own healing journey. Mm. And then in, I collected all these amazing tools and tested them on me and then I put to them together in a program so that people can go through the these specific spaces that they need to go through in order to like un uncollapse with that other human being and really have their heart open again. That's powerful. That's beautiful. Yeah. I love it. Awesome. So Krista, how how would you define love? What's your definition of love? Ooh, well my definition of love is being present. Because when I'm present, nothing's going on in my mind. I'm not letting anything else distract me. I'm just here with you. Then what naturally shows up? To me, love is right there in the present moment and being present. Um, that's love for me. It's mostly an energy, a presence. It really is about presence for me. Nice, nice. I like that. And you know what? Presence brings connection. Mm-hmm. Presence yeah. brings connection, and I love that. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, awesome. because it, when you're being present, mm. you really are being loving. When you're being present with your wife, you're being present with your husband, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your children. When you're present with them, they feel connection and yeah. love. To me, being present is the biggest gift that we can give to everyone in our lives and to the world. Absolutely. But it takes, it takes something to get there. <laughs> it does, yeah. And that was my next question then. That's going to be my next question. How, how can somebody be present? How can somebody bring that presence and that connection in the now? Mm, well, that's, it, that's a really great question. I know what I do for me, um, but that's what the documentary and this movement that I'm creating, The Presence of Love, is really about. It's an exploration into what is the presence of love, where is it? How do you get to it? And I think everyone has their own way. You know, like everyone, because we all have, you know, there's seven, over seven billion people in this world and everyone has their own unique perspective, their own way they look at it. So I can't tell you exactly what you need to do to get present because you have your own unique way. It may be similar, but it's not going to be exact. But for me, how do I get present? <sighs> Well, gosh, um, mostly I look at what is not, I, I take moments each day to check in and say, how am I not being present? Nice. So I look at that. So I actually have it on my calendar. There's certain things in my structure of how Krista is made that takes me out. There's certain things like um, I have this belief that I'm not important or there's something wrong with me. And these are normal things that all human beings have. They have their own version of it. But if I go down that path, if something happens and I think I'm not important or something's wrong with me, oh, I'm, uh, I'm out. Mm. I'm not present at all. 
I'm tripping. I'm 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 getting upset. I'm like over here now. Like I'm like way over and so I put structures in place for me to be able to just be present to that that's going to be a normal part of being human and that I can actually keep that in check and love that part of myself instead of squishing it off. It's a part of me. So I have to take ownership of that. And those are the two main things that take me out of being present. Also what I do to be present is I meditate. Um, mm-hmm. I take time to be by myself. Um, and it's mostly like I have committed to being the presence of love no matter what. That's my mission for me personally. And to take that into a more of a global way to give that as an access to other people. So I'm still in the inquiry around it. I'm not perfect. But to me, um, just taking this moment and getting, just choosing the moment, really. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. You, you talk about taking ownership. You talk about you know, making sure you check in with yourself and mm-hmm. see if you are being present throughout the day. And I love that. That's beautiful. That's something actually uh, quite interesting. Um, I'm, I'm part of a book club. So we read a book, you know, every month. And my book for January was High Performance Habits by Brendan Burchard. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know if you're familiar with Brendan, um, but that's a really amazing book where he's done like a, a decade of research. He's the world's number one high performance expert. Um, and he talks about um, something quite similar in the book that you have to have that moment of introspection in the day where you reflect on um, you know what what you are going to do so set intention and he also talks about releasing tension so where you talk about meditation so you talk about both those things uh, but he puts it as you have to release tension and set the intention for what is to come. So it's, he talks about uh, these transitions during the day that you go through. So one time you're waking up and then you're going to work. So before you actually walk into work, there's a transition. You're not going to work mode. So you have to take the moment to release the tension that you're carrying with you and set the intention of what you're going to do when you go to work. Similarly, when you come home, family time, whatever, or you're going out to see your friends or you're sitting down to eat your food. Anything like that. I said there's loads of transitions and you have to, for each one, release tension and set that intention. I love that. So, I love that too. I think that's really beautiful. <laughs> Actually, I'm really glad you shared that because I'm getting so much for myself out of that because um, I work from home. I don't know if you do as well, yeah. but I find that I, uh, because of that, I don't always create that transition time. I'm like going from being at home to like mm. working and being at home and then, and then, I, I want to create a life in which it's there is this okay I'm working now and create that container and then now I'm having my personal time yeah. but it's gotten a little like hazy and 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 it, it makes me feel a little off and I, you're giving me access right now to maybe why I've been feeling just a little off with that because I haven't created that transition time that's yeah. really powerful sharing that yeah no problem I mean I'm a big fan of Brandon's um he is phenomenal I mean he's the world's number one you know, a high performance expert. He's trained everybody from Oprah to the billionaires, right? So he is the man. He's got his own research institute. He's been doing research into high performance for over a decade. So if anybody's like an authority on high performance, it's him. And that's what he talks about. His latest book, The High Performance Habits, is basically his his life's work all put together, dis- distilled into that one book. So really, really powerful stuff there. I absolutely love it. So yeah, by all means, please check it out if you if you're interested. Yeah, actually, while you were just saying that, I just did a quick look up because somebody did send me something recently, and I was like, is this the same guy? And it really was. I watched some of Brendan Burchard's uh, videos, and yeah. very inspiring, really powerful, yeah. definitely. I'll have to check him out some more. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's absolutely amazing. I'm a huge fan, huge fan. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, Krista, you talked there about you know making sure that you are taking the time to reflect. You talk mm-hmm. about you know, taking ownership and that helps you develop the mindset to then be present and bring that love to every situation and wherever you are and whoever you're with. I think that's fantastic. I think that's beautiful. And thank you for sharing that. That was, uh, that was really powerful. Yeah, you're welcome. I just really want to know in all of this, where you're helping so many people, you are creating programs, you are actually coaching clients, you want to reach out and make a global impact. What's driving you? Really who I am. I've created myself to be the presence of love. 
Like, I think we get to create who we are. We get to choose who we want to be for ourselves. We get to choose who we want to be for our family. And we get to choose who we want to be for the world. So I've chosen that who I am is the presence of love. And so I create my reality based on who I am and not what's typically human and predictable. So I choose each day to take actions in alignment with who I've said I am and who I am. And while I may not be 100% the presence of love all the time because I'm human, um, but that is my North Star, that is my compass, that is my purpose in life, which is to be that for myself and for everyone that comes within my sphere of influence. And it's really just, it, I've just taken that on. It's not anyone's, no one's told me to do that. I've taken it on as my own game or my own mission um, in life because I feel like that's really at the essence, like who I am, and I want to live in alignment with that and see what kind of magic I can create in my own life, in my family's life, and also in the world because of who I am. That, Krista, is a, is a beautiful answer. Really, really <laughs> beautiful, uh, really amazing. And, <clears throat> sorry, I'm gonna have to edit that bit out. Um, but <laughs> really amazing um, answer. And seriously, it's so open, so genuine, so transparent that to be honest with you, I, I felt a connection there. Like I could relate to that. I really felt a connection there. Um, and I'm, I'm sure people who are watching this right now that was so amazing what Krista shared with us. I'm sure you guys felt a connection here as well. Because I, I felt a connection here. I don't know if you can see me pointing to my chest, but I felt a connection right here. I was like, wow, this is something I can relate to. This is beautiful. It really was a beautiful answer. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, you're welcome. Awesome. So, Krista, you talk about the fact that, you know, you, you want to create that huge change in the world. You want mm -hmm. to explore love you want to explore the the different modalities of it and how it's applied and how people experience it in different ways mm. that global impact that you're trying to achieve what do you hope to be the outcome of that wow well I mean, in the, re in the physical reality, the outcome is I would love there to be actually a day, and it seems really big and grand, and there's so many people are like, that's not possible, but I'm like, well, why not? Why can't it be possible? But I would love to see a day devoted to everyone choosing to be the presence of love, whatever that is for them, like a, a day or even an hour where all human beings in the world come together at that same time. I really think that would just be, that would alter the universe. I think we're very powerful as human beings. I think we don't realize how powerful we really are, especially where we put, we choose to put our attention. Um, and if we put our attention, even if it was just five minutes to law, even if the whole world for five minutes just focused on whatever it was for them to be present, to love, whatever background, whatever, anything, that I'm just curious to see what would happen. Mm, yeah. what that, that just seems like when I think about just everyone taking that action, like what's possible then? So that's the game that I'm playing. That's the, that's the problem that I'm trying to solve. And so I'm talking to people about it, seeing, um, connecting with other people who are also up to something similar. Mm. Um, this is a big problem to solve. Like it's like a puzzle really. I'm just curious to see what happens when humans actually do focus on, to me, is their highest level of intelligence, which is love. We have all different types of intelligence, um, but to me, love is the ultimate level of intelligence, and that is actually the hardest thing to be. I think being a loving human being is even harder than building a billion-dollar company. I think that's the ultimate challenge, is mm. to be loved. Yeah, yeah, I love that. That's uh, that's amazing, and thank you for sharing that. That that's a really powerful vision that you have there. Um, and you know what? You're absolutely right. It it is hard, but I don't think it's impossible. I don't think so either. Like I think I think it's actually really doable, mm. which gets me excited. I'm like, oh my god, what's gonna happen? <laughs> yes, yes, and you know what? That that energy, that enthusiasm, that passion, that excitement—it comes, it shows, right? Like I can feel it sitting here. That's amazing, awesome. So you know what? At, at this stage, I, 
I want to just take a moment and just say, first of all, thank you for sharing all of that. But also, you know what? All the best. Because I'd love to... I love to actually see where this goes. I think you're you're on to something big and I love to see where it goes and you know what all the best. I'm I'm sure everything will work out. You're somebody who's so excited, so passionate, so kind of driven by this that I think you're going to go ahead and do something amazing and I I just hope that I'm there to witness all of it. You will. You will be there to witness it. You will. You will see. Yes, yes, I'm sure I will. That's awesome. So thanks for sharing that. Krista, let's go in a slightly different direction. In terms of your clients, you're, you're now, yes, we're, in the, we're changing directions. So in terms of work, when you're working with your clients, what are yeah. the common limiting beliefs they have about relationships, about love? Where do they struggle? Mm, the most common ones. Hmm. Well, there's societal ones, and then there's individual ones. Right. Uh, the societal one, and I don't know if it's similar in the UK, um, okay. but definitely here in the United States, and I'd love it if you can confirm it. Um, but one of the societal ones we he- have here um, is like what I call a fairy tale, which is just a story that's made up. Um, it's intended to deceive, and people believe it. Um, and so one of the fairy tales, I, I one part of my job is to... Uh, have exposed these fairy tales so people can see it so they're not deceived by it but one of them is love's just gonna happen Mm. so people really think that love is just this magical thing and it is right but they think it's this magical thing that's just going to happen and so because I work with single people they believe this they say some version of that do they say some version of that in the UK like oh it'll come to you don't worry it'll come your way something like that do they do that in the UK um, I'm, I'm pretty sure they do and I think it's going to be the same pretty much everywhere in the world because it's an expectation oh yeah if it's meant to be it will happen but yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it doesn't work that way right like you have to put in the effort no it doesn't work that way mm. exactly exactly so people think it's just some magical thing and then they just sit at home and then they watch Netflix and then they wonder why they haven't found someone but when they start working with me they start to see oh I've just believed this fairy tale mm. that love's just going to happen and then what I start to do is that I help them to start to see where they're not taking action and then they start to feel empowered because when love doesn't happen for them and they actually believe that fairy tale they start to think a lot of negative things about themselves they start to think like there's something wrong with me maybe I'm too overweight maybe I'm too educated maybe I'm just not good enough maybe I don't have enough maybe I have too much debt you know when 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 the result that you want is not happening you can, it's easy to go into victim mode and to start thinking that there's something wrong with you but after people just even after one initial consultation with me they start to see all the many ways that they're in victim mode and that they're actually not having the result that they want mm. because they just haven't been taking action and then they get really empowered then they start to th- see oh this is all on me like I'm not having the result because I haven't been doing anything yeah 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 <laughs> And so then I help them to strategically take the actions that are in alignment with what they really need and want. So they're not wasting their time. So they're not just, you know, in a frenzy trying to find love. They're actually loving themselves and taking consistent action every single day in alignment with what they really need and want. And it's very empowering um, for them to be able to, like, actually start dating and taking action and having that fun experience and then ultimately finding the one that they really want to be with. It's a beautiful process. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Um, You work with obviously so many different clients from different backgrounds and they have, you know, different stages in life and different things that they're up to, different things they're doing, etc. So where do you where do you start? Where do you start with somebody? For example, let's say you got a new client Mm -hmm. and they they're just not sure what they need doing or where they need to go or what needs to change in order for them to essentially attract their ideal partner or inside in order for them to actually find love mm-hmm. well where we always start is we begin with the conversation of what do you want right. and sometimes most I would say most of the time I would say 85% of the time people don't really know what they want they have an idea of what they want 
but they haven't, they don't know what they want. Like sometimes I'll even say like, so like they'll say all these things they want, like good looking, handsome, good, you know, uh, funny. But then I say, well, what do you really want? And I say, do you want to get married? Is that what you would ultimately want? Do you want to have a family? And then they're like, well, yeah, I would want that. But they're not admitting that to themselves. They're not thinking mm -hmm. about that that's the ultimate intention of, like, why are you even dating? I mean, people don't come to me if they just want to pick up men or pick up women. Like, I'm not, like, I'm, people come to me because they actually want a meaningful relationship that lasts a lifetime. So it's a different way to date. It's a different way to approach it than just putting yourself out there and and putting it and, and it could be really stressful so the number one thing I start with is getting people to like really viscerally get in their body like oh yeah I want to get married I want to have a family I want this whatever it is they that they want we need to get them to own it and not put it off because a lot of single people what they do is they've given up and they think, well, I can't, I, you know, I'm in my late 30s, it's too late for me, I can't have this. And so they've, they've, they've created this whole story around how they can't have what they want, so they've given up on marriage. So I have to initially get them to own it, that they've given up and they've gotten resigned, mm -hmm. and that that's actually what they really want. Because if you lose hope, if you don't have any hope, you're not going to take any action. You're not going to take any action now. So my job actually is to give people hope to infuse hope into their mind so they can start to, oh, I can have this, I really can, and I'm like, yes, yes. And then the next thing we do is we really look at what could be sabotaging their ability to be in the relationship they want. And so there's lots of things like not taking action, their mindset, maybe the environment they're in, um, it could be anything. So those are the two areas, like boom, right away on that first initial call, I hit them hard mm. because I need to, be able to shift it for them and then so they can have that experience and then if they want to work with me further from there they can but I want to make sure that first initial call they get something big for themselves yeah yeah and it is quite big it is quite big to actually own it right to understand what's really happened and it's you telling yourself the story which is exactly why I bring on people on my YouTube channel so people stop telling themselves the story that they've been telling themselves and holding some back and having those limiting beliefs and not taking action and being stuck in the paradigm, but really start to see what's really truly possible for them. So I get guests mm -hmm. from like all, all walks of life. So th this, this has been absolutely phenomenal. And uh, yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's, that was really good for people to see like, well, what's the starting point? Where do I even start from, right? So if you're mm -hmm. watching this right now and you are feeling stuck, you are frustrated, maybe you uh, have just given up hope, right? Krista is, is the one who's actually bringing hope to people. And, and she's telling people what, what's really truly possible for them. But first of all, it comes from owning it, right? So you have to own what you have created so far and then you take it from there and awesome. And to be honest with you, Krista, like throughout this call, but especially in the last bit, the energy was really high. You were super excited. It was just coming out of the screen and punching me in the face, okay? I felt that one. Yes, I felt that one. I'm gonna be black and blue tomorrow. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> well it's true you you you're you're a very high energy person i love that you are very passionate about what you do i love that and obviously you don't mind sharing it you're very open with it which is perfect which is exactly you know we're having this conversation um but seriously it shows it shows that you care it really shows it that you do so awesome love it thank you cool so <laughs> you're gonna go join a boxing gym now aren't you <laughs> awesome so Krista now you have found amazing success in this in this field and you continue to go ahead and develop so many different things to help other people what do you do to develop yourself Oh, wow. Well, I always make sure I have very wise people around me, people that will that can see my blind spots and people who can point them out to me. I always make sure I have like a, at least a handful of um, advisors, uh, mentors, mm. people, people who will talk to me directly and straight. Um, and so that's like one of the things that I do um, for sure for my own growth because it's really those things that are in the blind spot that um, that can show up um, and 
you know, sabotage things in life or those things in the blind spot that can actually, um, they're driving the show and you don't even know. So because, because of who I've declared myself to be, to be this presence of love for the world, which is insane, right? <laughs> um, it's also uh, awesome. It's also awesome at the same time. <laughs> Like that's my job. I, I've, I've, I've given myself the crown of the queen of the presence of love, and that's my responsibility now. I'm taking full responsibility for that. Um, yeah, it's mostly I just make sure that I have people that are ahead of me and that can see mm. um, and that love me and, uh, and empower me. And yeah, they can. And, and I make sure that they are um, they're up to things too, and that they are up to that bigger uh, vision as well. Yeah. You know, and um, Heather. Heather, who connected us, she's one of those people. She is a beautiful human being. Mm. She is so strong, so determined, so helpful, such a selfless servant. She's such a great human being. And she's one of those people that I surround myself as, with as well because she's just stellar. She's such a contribution. Yeah, uh, and people who are watching this, I have scheduled an interview with Heather, so hopefully she'll be coming on, and you get to witness that live. She really is. Yeah. She brings tremendous energy to everything, uh, and yeah, it's been a phenomenal experience to connect with her as well. Yeah, she's she's dynamo. You're going to have fun with her because she's quite the personality. She's amazing. <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> yeah, she is awesome. She really is. Um, and for people who are actually, you know, watch the watch the channel regularly, they will be kind of jumping out of the seats right now and shouting like, you know, Talal talks about this all the time. You have to surround yourself with people who uplift you, who drive you, who motivate you, who push you forward, not the people who hold you back, who crush you. And for those people, you have to let them go. The people who hold you back and stuff, they are the rotten apples and one rotten apple can ruin a whole barrel. You have to let them go. You have to upgrade the five people you spend the most time with because you are the average of those five. And I talk about it all the time. I absolutely believe in it. And there you go. That goes to show the power of surrounding yourself with the right people. So awesome, Chris, that, that's been phenomenal. Now, you've added a tremendous amount of value to everyone and you brought tons of energy and I absolutely loved it. This has been an absolute blast. Now, towards the end, I usually like to do a, kind of like a rapid fire round, like just quick two, three short questions. Is that okay? Yeah, let's do it. This will be fun. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, uh, my first question is, if, if you could change only one thing in your life right now, what would you change? Mm, change one thing. Gosh. Oh, um, um, have more experiences of togetherness because I'm I work alone a lot, like in my home, and right. I want more experiences of togetherness with people outside of the home. Outside <laughs> the home. home. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, okay. Next one. So, of all the kind of experiences you've had what's the one experience that had the biggest impact on you mm, the one experience that had the biggest impact I would say there was one time I was in the presence of someone who to me was the ultimate presence of love like it's almost like love was, was like laser beams of love were shining out <laughs> of his eyes Right. Seriously, it was like it was like a thousand, a thousand flowers blooming all at the same time, and it really impacted me and helped me to see like what could be possible in with for a human being on this planet. It was beautiful. Fantastic, awesome, <laughs> and finally, of all your favorite romantic and love movies, which one's your favorite? Um. Oh, what's that one? That's from the UK, and it's that Christmas one. Is it called Say? Um, <sighs> it's the one with all the different actors in it, and it's Christmassy. Uh, uh, love Actually. Love, love Actually. Okay, love Actually. That's it. Yeah, I've, I've, I think I've heard the name. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Great. Cool. So there's a recommendation for you people if you're watching this right now. Check it out if you haven't already. <laughs> I love it. It's easy and it's awesome. <laughs> awesome. So, Krista, I, yeah. I, think, I think this has been a tremendous call. We've got a lot of value out of it. But at this stage, I just want to know, how can we help you? 
and how can people reach out to you? Well, there's so many ways to connect with me. I'm big on Facebook, so definitely you can find me on there. And my name is spelled a little differently, Talal. Like my name is actually spelled C R I S T A. Um, so if people do search for Krista Beck, they need to spell it that way. Okay. Um, but you you can go to my website, KristaBeck.com. Um, I have you know you that's way you can contact me. I would actually recommend they just hop on a phone call with me and like have this one-on-one -on -one experience. They're yeah. totally complimentary. Um, and then that's the way we can be connected and like, co-create like what's possible. So I would say go to my website and hop on a phone call with me. Let's connect. I really want to be a part of shifting um, the trajectory of how your love life's going for sure. Fantastic. I love it. And guys, if you're watching this, you know every single time I ask you guys to go ahead and take action. Okay, I encourage you guys to take action and connect with all the guests because that's where the real value is in connecting with somebody and building that relationship, right? And actually connecting with somebody and having that one-to-one -one experience with them. And that's really mm -hmm. powerful. So go ahead, take action. I'll put the links to the Facebook page and the website below in the description. Click on it, go ahead and reach out to Krista, start a conversation. If you don't know what to say, I'll tell you what to say. Just say, hi, Krista. I actually watched the whole interview on Hustle is for Life Motivation. Loved it. You added a tremendous value. These things really stood out, X, Y, Z, whatever stood out to you. And I'm going to be taking action on these things. Thank you so much for your time. That's all you have to say. Okay, takes two minutes, send that email or make that call. Really appreciate your time. Krista, this has been absolutely phenomenal. Had a blast. You know what? I'd love to have you back for round two sometime. Okay, that would be fantastic. I so <laughs> enjoyed being with you. I love what you're up to. I love what you're committed to and just really helping people to stay on track and making their lives bigger and stronger and more like inspirational and even better. I just love what you're up to. And thank you so much for for having me on your show. It's been such a great pleasure getting to know you. Well, thanks so much, Krista, for those kind words, but really it's, it's about the people that I bring on. Um, I bring on amazing people because I believe in them. I think they are doing amazing work to change people's lives. So when I bring somebody on, I really want to expose the audience to my network and really, so they, they can actually benefit. They can benefit from those people. So that's really my goal. Um, and again, thank you for taking the time to be here with us. Really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Bye, everyone. Yeah, take care, guys. Hustle hard, and I'll catch you in the next one.